Hello, friends. Perhaps someone will call the story of this widely loved and certainly respectable Japanese brand amazing, while others might not see anything special about it, and even consider it boring. It is inspiring, but at the same time it's a typical fairy tale about a poor boy from a large family of an ordinary fisherman who influenced the course of history and made a difference to all mankind. His company had to go through many ups and downs in order to achieve its truly overwhelming success. Now you can find Mazda cars everywhere in every corner of the world. Everyone recognizes this famous logo, the V-shaped wings. But at the same time, most people don't know that Mazda is one of those brands that cares about the environment, while its cars are highly popular on at least five continents. The wide range of its models is united by a single story that embodies the dreams and thoughts of thousands of completely different people that have ever been involved in the creation of the Mazda reality. A reality that everyone can experience once they get behind the wheel of this legendary car. The company celebrated its 100th birthday in 2000. Let's dive into history together and find out what happened during those 100 years, how it all began, how the story unraveled, and most importantly, how this company grew into a huge corporation, starting from a small barn where its founder made the first development. I hope many of you will be interested to find out. Jujiro Matsuda was born back in 1875 as the twelfth son in a family of fishermen from the Hiroshima Prefecture. Given the status of his family and the number of siblings, the boy's childhood definitely wasn't an easy one. He had to start working at the age of seven to help his parents. Overall, he was no different from his peers, but at the age of 14, he already became a blacksmith's assistant. He happened to really enjoy what he was doing, processing metal, complex mechanisms, etc., which would all end up playing an important role in his life. Seeing Jujiro's entrepreneurial spirit and his interest in blacksmithing, his father sent him to work as an apprentice to a blacksmith. In 1895, the 20-year-old Jujiro already opened his own small forge in a tiny shed in his yard, but as is often the case, business requires acumen. The work was hard, orders were scarce, and the payment was barely enough to make ends meet. A couple of months later, Jujiro ran into debt so the business had to be closed. However, the young man couldn't imagine his life without his passion. So until the age of 30, he continued to work as a blacksmith in different workshops. And in the meantime, he spent his evenings working on some mechanisms in the shed for his own enjoyment. That's how in 1906, after several weeks of work, the 31-year-old Jujiro invented his first pump. It seemed like it was his chance. It was a breakthrough and pumps were in high demand. So that same year, he invested his money into a new forge and even got a patent for the air pump. But a few years later, the company ceased to exist again. It was his second attempt and his second failure. So he had to search for a job as an employed worker yet again. A couple of months later, the ambitious Jujiro got a job as an intern at a foundry, and thanks to his love of metal, he became the top student in just a few months. Let me just jump ahead and say that at the time, he couldn't have even imagined that five years later, he would take over the management of the company and would fundamentally change the way it operated. To optimize and speed up the production, he would start using the pump of his own design. By that time, Matsuda would have already become a fairly wealthy person. Matsuda made many more attempts to leave his mark in history. Let me give you a brief overview. Let's go back as far as 1915, when Jujiro was already 40 years old. Yes, friends, this is exactly the kind of story that proves that it is never too late to start something. After all, even at the age of 50, he still had no idea that he would become a founder of a world-famous brand. After managing the company for several years, he was removed from the office in 1912 due to a change in the country's internal policy and dissatisfaction with his excessive initiative. However, the man didn't give up. He bought a bankrupt construction company and organized his own business called Matsuda Works. There, he established the production of weapons, in particular, the Type 99 rifle, which he successfully supplied to Russia as per the Tsar's orders. Matsuda specifically hired 4,000 people to meet Russia's order for 4 million artillery primers. 
During the beginning of the First World War, the Tsarist army experienced a lack of ammunition and bought Japanese weapons, generously paying for them with gold. It was the sales to Russia that contributed to the rapid prosperity of the company. However, Matsuda soon sold this business. In 1920, he returned to his native Hiroshima to take over the management of an artificial cork manufacturer, Toyo Cork Kogyo. But unfortunately, artificial cork was no longer in high demand after the First World War, so he had to quit the business. In 1921, he changed the focus of the company to tool manufacturing. They started producing pumps of his own design, jackhammers, etc. One might say that this was the beginning of Mazda. Those were the 20s, the dawn of the Japanese car industry, when Ford, General Motors and Chrysler opened their factories there. Japan's own car industry was represented by DAT, future Nissan, and Otomo by Hayataya Toyakawa, an engineer from Tokyo. It was then that Matsuda came up with a brilliant idea. By that time, he had workers and facilities, as well as the territory where he could manufacture virtually anything. After much deliberation, Matsuda radically changed the direction of his work, and in 1929, he also decided to join the pioneers, starting with production of motorcycles. However, things didn't go further than the first trial batch of 30 items produced in 1930. Motorcycles weren't in high demand and their production was too expensive. Still, Matsuda wasn't ready to give up. Thus, after a dozen failed attempts to launch new products and businesses, Matsuda decided to give the market what it needed, something simple and reasonably priced. So he began manufacturing auto rickshaws, three-wheeled trucks similar to those that Karl Borgward began producing in 1920 in Germany that was ravaged by the First World War. The motorized tricycles were named Mazdago and were manufactured in the Fuchu city. It was the first three-wheeled vehicle of its kind, a small and economical truck, primarily designed for the convenient transportation of goods. Its engine capacity was only 500 cc's. The vehicle looked more like a motorcycle. What's interesting is that the fuel tank had a Mitsubishi logo on it. This was because until 1936, Mazda products were sold through the Mitsubishi Corporation distribution network, which at the time was monopolistic in various industries. There was a huge demand for this technological wonder. In fact, it was a real breakthrough for Asia, cheap and efficient. Thanks to its powerful frame and a cast rear axle beam, Mazda Go could transport up to almost a half a ton of goods in its truck. Before their release, the Japanese used to transport goods using bicycles and carts drawn by oxen or horses. Over 200,000 vehicles were sold in the 25 years that the Mazda Go was being manufactured. In 1931, the name of the company was changed to Mazda, the name of the supreme Zoroastrian god Ahura Mazda, relatable to the surname of the company's founder. And in 1932, they started exporting the tricycle to China. Similar vehicles were being supplied to the Japanese army during the Second World War. By 1940, Matsuda was ready to launch a new project, creating a small sedan, which he had been nurturing for several years. But unfortunately, the Second World War made its own adjustments. The company began to focus on manufacturing motorcycles for the army. Therefore, all the plans for the production of new cars had to be postponed. The company was doing well thanks to the large number of army orders, but that was exactly until August 6th, 1945. The company headquarters in the main production plant was located just five kilometers from the epicenter of the nuclear explosion in Hiroshima and suffered heavy damage during the bombing. But Matsuda put all his effort and money into the restoration of the plant, so the company began its operations again in 1948. By 1950, Jujiro Matsuda got the production levels back to 100%. During this period, the manufacturing of new Mazda models was launched. Three-wheeled trucks type CT, fire trucks, and regular trucks. This launch was followed by a passenger modification of the vehicle, Mazda Go PB which was widely used as a taxi in Hiroshima. The next release was a motorcycle truck with a carrying capacity of two tons and a five meter long cargo platform. More and more versions of the three-wheel trucks continued to be successfully manufactured and sold while the mine behind them, the engineer and owner of the company continued to age. In 1952, Jujiro Matsuda passed away at the age of 76. 
but Mazda, which became his lifetime project, continued to thrive. A year before Jujiro's death in 1951, Suni Matsuda succeeded his father as the president of the company. In the 50s and 60s of the 20th century, a real boom in passenger car production began in Japan. It was brought about by the country's recovery after the war. All the government's forces were aimed at overcoming the post-war depression. The main focus was made on export, and the war between the United States and Korea in 1950 to 1953 came in very handy. The Japanese economy carried out all military orders for the United States and also supplied a huge amount of goods for the American troops. A few years later, Japan managed to cover the trade deficit and get enough funds to increase the import of raw materials, which they were lacking for the development of production, including automotive. That's exactly how Mazda started the mass production of their first passenger car at the peak of the country's economic growth in 1960. It was the Mazda R360 Coupe. The Mazda R360 didn't have a sophisticated design. Its main advantage was comfort, reasonable price, and availability on the market. The Mazda R360 was a two-door car with a 356cc engine, 16 horsepower, and fuel consumption of 1 liter per 32 kilometers. Just in December 1960, 4,090 Mazda R360 vehicles were sold. The car was very light and inexpensive, which was in line with the philosophy of Henry Ford, who always tried to make cars lighter and available to a wide range of customers. Despite the fact that Mazda was actively exporting its cars to China and India, it hadn't entered the world market, dominated by the US and European giants. To overcome tough competition in the foreign markets, Mazda had to produce cars in accordance with the highest international standards, competitive in all parameters and characteristics, price, quality, service, eco-friendliness, etc. However, even when all the conditions were met, the car still needed a special distinctive feature to stand out. Mazda president Suni Matsuda understood this perfectly well and was constantly on the outlook for something that would make the whole world talk about Mazda. And let me jump ahead and say that he did find it. He found NSU and Felix Wankel. A year earlier in 1959, a German company, NSU, one of the oldest manufacturers of motorcycles and cars, today a part of Audi, officially announced the completion of the development of the Felix Wankel rotary engine. About 100 companies around the world immediately got interested in the new development. Tsuni Matsuda was as passionate about new ideas and inventions as his father, so he saw the potential of the rotary engine before others did and personally began negotiations with the NSU. In 1961, a contract between Mazda and NSU with the support from the Japanese government was signed. Mazda set up a separate division within its company to research rotary engines. During that period, Mazda became the only company of its kind as it developed models with piston, diesel and rotary engines. But rotary engines had a serious drawback at first, their fragility. The first prototypes only lasted a couple of hours when they were tested. The next ones depleted their mechanical resources after 100 hours of work, which is extremely little for a car. Mazda conducted its own research and found that when the triangular rotor rotated, the plugs on its tops vibrated, while transverse grooves appeared on the inner surface of the working chamber, which led to uneven wear and fragility. Today, wear-resistant coatings, including ceramic ones, are used to solve this problem. Bringing these cars out on the market before fixing their deficiencies would be a rather risky move, so Mazda continued its rotor research, not forgetting about its regular customers in the meantime. Thus, the world saw a new compact pickup truck, B1500, which also made a name for itself on the Japanese market. And in 1962, they began to assemble cars in South Korea, after which a four-cylinder Mazda Carroll 360 with 18 horsepower and a Mazda Carroll 360 Coupe appeared on the market. In the same year, the first four-passenger Mazda vehicle with a capacity of 28 horsepower, Mazda Carroll 600, was released. Since the genius Henry Ford was already in full control of the world's minds, it wasn't surprising that the Mazda Carroll 600 was very similar to the Ford Anglia. 
1963 secured Mazda the status of a reliable company, which had produced as much as one million cars since its inception. The beloved Mazda Carol 600, in the color of gold metallic, became their millionth car. So gradually, step by step, Mazda creations were spreading around the world. Of course, many car companies aimed at the production of expensive, elite cars, investing enormous resources in their development. But time laid down the rules. First, the mass market, and then everything else. This simple recipe provided a stable income, some of which would be used to implement new, incredible ideas. Therefore, Mazda continued to produce popular cars, such as the rather powerful Mazda E2000 and E2500 trucks, and also launched a series of family cars. Mazda Familia 800 van, Mazda Familia 800 sedan. They were equipped with a 782cc engine with a capacity of 42 horsepower and could reach the speed of up to 110 kilometers per hour. In January 1965, Mazda signed a cooperation contract with the British company Perkins Services NV with regard to the production of diesel engines. It was then that the world saw the first Mazda 25-seat bus with a 2-liter engine. In early 1967, the production of the Mazda Pro Seed and Mazda Familia 1000 Coupe were launched with the speed of up to 120 and 145 kilometers per hour, respectively. For more demanding customers, Mazda Lucy with a volume of 1,492 cc's and 78 horsepower and the top speed of up to 150 kilometers per hour was developed. Manufacturing capacities were increased, cars were made faster and better. This allowed the company to finally organize the full-scale export to Europe in 1967 and to release a car that attracted admiring glances around the world. In May 1967, Mazda Cosmo Sports 110S with a rotary engine was introduced into mass production. This comet-like car had a rotary engine with two chambers, a 491cc, 110 horsepower and could reach the maximum speed of up to 185 kilometers per hour. A year later, its power was increased to 128 horsepower and the speed exceeded 200 kilometers per hour. This was the beginning of a new era. Both sports coupes and ordinary civilian cars began to be equipped with rotary engines. In 1969, Mazda signed an agreement with Ford and Nissan for the establishment of the Japanese automatic transmission company, JATCO. Mazda entered the Canadian market and then, in 1970, the US market. Even then, the United States had already put forward stringent environmental control requirements for imported cars, which Mazda was able to meet easily. By this time, it had already produced 100,000 cars with rotary engines. Like all other car manufacturers, Mazda tried to favorably present their cars in the sports and racing arenas of the world. Automotive innovations were being developed all the time, and the world-famous races were one way to prove their success. Thus, two Mazda Cosmo Sports 110S cars participated in the 84-hour Marathon de la Rue. And even though only one of them reached the finish line, taking the fourth place, it was still a good result. In 1972, the number of manufactured vehicles had gone over the 5 million mark. The geography of car assembly expanded even further. Japan, South Korea, South Africa, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Thailand. Sales offices were being opened all over the world. And it would all have been good if it wasn't for the 1974 oil crisis, which forced the company's management to abandon rotary engines in civilian cars and only use them in sports cars because of the overly high consumption of fuel and oil the prices on which increased significantly. However, this didn't scare off true connoisseurs of power and speed, who in 1978 released the Mazda Savannah RX-7, with a rotary engine of 105 horsepower, reaching the speed of up to 200 kilometers per hour. A famous rally driver, Rod Millen, became the US rally champion for two consecutive years on a Mazda Savannah RX-7. And in 1986, the new generation of Mazda Savannah RX-7 set the national speed record in Bonneville, 383.724 km per hour. The rotor was unbeatable. This model participated in and won many races in the United States. Over time, Mazda RX-7 Affini was recognized as one of the most powerful mass production cars with a rotary engine. It should be noted that Mazda was one of the few manufacturers that kept rotary engines in their range of motors, 
while other manufacturers completely abandoned them. Some experiments with the rotor were also conducted in the USSR at the VAZ, but it never went beyond the pilot batch of VAZ-2101 Kopietkas and Lada Samara vehicles as well as some small-scale production. In 1975, Ford bought 25% of Toyo Kogyo's shares, and a new round of development began for Mazda. The range of its products expanded, while Europe and America were already in love with the brand and its popularity broke all records in Japan. Thus, Mazda Familia was voted Car of the Year in 1980, and the Mazda Capella took the nomination in 1982. After that, Mazda's collaboration with Ford was very successful. In 1984, the company changed its name to the Mazda Motor Corporation. and in 1989 gave us the legendary Mazda MX-5. Legend has it that it was designed by the company's engineers just for fun after hours. But nonetheless, it became the best-selling roadster in the world and at virtually the most affordable price. Sales of the Mazda MX-5 were so incredible that they got into the Guinness Book of Records several times as the best-selling sports car. 350,000 items in 2005, then 700,000, 800,000, and 900,000 items in subsequent years. As of today, the Mazda MX-5 has been in the Mazda lineup the longest. 1990 was the year of great achievements. The number of vehicles manufactured since the establishment of Mazda Motor Corporation hit the 25 million mark, with 1 million being the RX-7. 1991 was a glorious year for Mazda in car racing. The Mazda 787B won the Le Mans 24-hour race. Not only was it the first victory for a Japanese car, but also the only victory for a rotary engine car. The average speed on the track was 205.1 km per hour. That year, Mazda beat the race favorites such as Mercedes, Jaguar, and Peugeot at Le Mans. In the early 90s, the environmental trend in the company's activities was developing very rapidly, and the Mazda Global Environmental Charter was adopted. The goal was to use recycled materials, including plastic in car assembly, as well as to make the production as eco-friendly as possible. In 1992, the updated Mazda 626 was named Car of the Year. The production quantity and the number of new car models increased every year, so unfortunately we can't spend much time on any particular model, or even briefly cover all of the lineup, as this video would end up being over an hour long. However, it was in the 90s that the Mazda company conquered the hearts of millions of people all over the world, especially with such cars as the Mazda MX-6 two-door sports coupe, Mazda 121, Mazda 323, Mazda 626 or Mazda x 6 and x 9. The cars were coveted by thousands and millions of car lovers, and they still can be found on the roads of our cities. In 1999, the half a millionth Mazda MX-5 was manufactured and an agreement was signed with Mitsubishi, under which Mazda began to supply small commercial vehicles. New models were launched, the Tribute and Premacy. Mark Fields became the new president of the company. The early 2000s were successful for the company as it launched a new modification, MPV Sports F, designed specifically for women who often travel with kids. In the same year, the new Zoom Zoom philosophy was adopted as the basis for the new brand concept. The concept of driving with pleasure, a youthful spirit of mischief and drive. This slogan can often be heard at the end of Mazda ads even now. In 2004, the company celebrated 25 years of partnership with Ford and a year later released a redesigned Mazda MX-5. Overall, the company launched over 10 new models between 2005 and 2015 all the while improving the old ones and adding new features to the already popular models. The total number of the company's shareholders as of March 31, 2010 was 55,462. The company production volume in 2010 was 1,307,000 items and its revenues exceeded $23 billion. There are no more rotary engine cars in the Mazda car range now and many might call the company's car range today a bit boring. But despite all of this, Mazda continues to challenge other car brands by releasing electric vehicles, MC30, redesigning them, using eco-friendly materials, and making significant adjustments to vehicle safety. Be it as it may, between the early 2000s and now, 
Mazda has secured a place on the market. And now, Mazda just isn't a car. Mazda is a philosophy. Just look at the design of the Mazda 3 through the Mazda 6. These cars are still equally attractive to drivers of all age. The most popular are Mazda 3 sedans and hatchbacks, Mazda 6 sedan, as well as the CX series crossovers, such as the CX-7, CX-9, and later CX-5. On January 30, 2020, Mazda celebrated its 100th birthday. In matter of sales and development strategies, the company constantly and closely works with Ford, which owns only 3% of the company in 2020. Mazda assembly plants are located in 21 countries and allow it to export its products to 120 countries of the world. The company has a grand plan to fulfill by 2030. According to the adopted development strategy, Mazda will have completely abandoned internal combustion engines by 2030, allocating 95% of its range to hybrids with various forms of electrification and 5% to purely electric cars. In other words, Mazda is hard at work. We'll get to see a number of new models in 2020. First, we'll see the third, fourth generation Mazda again. The design is promised to be reminiscent of the beautiful Kai. Secondly, to mark the company's 100th anniversary, a new, expensive, elegant, and stylish Mazda RX-9 will be launched. It's also known that an electric version of the Mazda Vision Coupe will have debuted at the end of 2020. Meanwhile, the company seems to value small size and affordability more with every passing year. And it isn't surprising since the entire market fits into this paradigm at the moment. Considering all the pros and cons, many might point out that Mazda has poor sound insulation, not very durable bodies and paintwork, cheap interior materials. But at the same time, Mazda doesn't position itself as a premium class vehicle because of its cost and design, so one can easily turn a blind eye to all these minor flaws. After all, Mazda's philosophy is closely infused with the philosophy of Ford, a car for every family, which means that it must be affordable. This is the story of Mazda, the story of the Japanese car industry, the story of a son of a poor fisherman named Jujiro Matsuda. Well, as simple as it may sound, I'd like to remind you that it's the small things that always lead to big ones. Don't ever forget it. So friends, how do you feel about this brand of cars? Have you ever owned one? Feel free to express your opinion in the comments. I'd love to know. Well, that's it for today. Like our video, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.